um, a little bit about myself. Um, for those of you that are new and joining us with the EPICS webinars with our Empowering Youth series, um, I um, am a disability youth advocate here at EPICS. I um, lost my eyesight my freshman year of high school, and during this time I wasn't aware of all the resources out there and organizations that help students with disabilities. And at that point in my life, I learned how to advocate for myself, and I attended six different colleges and universities across the United States. And I found out how important it is to self-advocate and have resiliency. And so I'm very passionate about um, EPICS um, conducting these Empowering Youth Leadership Series PowerPoints. And transition is a huge portion of you know empowering our youth and getting them and preparing them for the future. So with that said, I'll go ahead and start um, our PowerPoint presentation and it's transition high school to college. Next slide. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Next slide. Are you ready and prepared to continue your education and pursue your dreams in life? Youth will contemplate various questions in their life and transitioning has you thinking and planning for your future. One may ask, is it hard? What can I do to make an easier transition? There isn't a right or wrong way to transition into college. Next slide. Your life is about to change. The difference between high school and college, there's a greater amount of freedom in college for the students. Another major factor is accountability. You are 100% accountable and responsible for attending classes, getting your studying done, turning in assignments, and studying for tests. Consequences, of course, are apparent if you don't meet these expe expectations of college. You have to be your own motivation. Next slide. Successful youth with disabilities are encompassed with similar characteristics, which has empowered them to successfully pursue their goals. They were self-advocates. These youth got up and stood up for their rights. Self-advocacy and the IEP. By the time the student is 14 years of age, 16 years old at the latest, the IEP should include something called a statement of needed transition services. These services should include coordinated set of activities and or goals to help the student prepare for post high school experiences. These services should include preparing for college as well. Next slide. The process in developing your transition plan with your IEP team, your special education teacher, general education teacher, counselor, and other school personnel this should include a schedule, this should, you, should, you should schedule a meeting with the student and parents. The ideal scenario is to begin planning your first two years of high school. Next slide. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 1990 and the reauthorization of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act of 2004 mandates transition planning. These laws give the schools flexibility in how the transition planning is implemented. This is the time to initiate the transition planning of college. Next slide. Your IEP team should begin by working with you to determine the various skills, knowledge, and competencies are needed for acceptance into college. Remember, the various colleges and universities have different requirements. Next slide. The student should have an idea on what community college, college, or university interests them, along with it, is it in-state or out-of-state? Is the college or university a commuter branch of a state university, private, public, technical college, liberal arts, or some other specialized program, like maybe a trade school? No matter what you decide, there are entrance requirements, and they are different. Your IEP team and or school counselor should be able to help you in what preparations are necessary. Next slide. 
Each of you are different, so each situation will be different. Consider these questions when searching for a college. Does the college require minimum ACT, SAT scores and or a minimum GPA? Are applicants with disabilities who don't meet minimum standards considered? What is the impact of special education development or skill building courses taken in high school? And has the student taken the types of courses suggested by the college? Next slide. Disability Support Services. The Disability Support Services will have various services at different schools. And they may have a different name as well, besides Disability Support Services. So make sure to find out what type of services there are at your school of interest. No services available is rare, but possible. And there's limited services, which is extended time might be provided. Other support is minimal. Loosely coordinated services. That means the accommodations may be available in one class, but not another. Centrally coordinated services. The institution has made a commitment to disability services and had a special office and program. A database service is cutting edge, usually connected to a graduate program in special education. Next slide. Colleges and universities range in size from a few hundred students to more than 40,000 students. Smaller schools provide more individualized contact with professors and staff. Students have the opportunity to get to know their professors on a personal level. The disability support services staff will more than likely know the professors. Keep in mind a smaller institution may also have limited resources and resources in their disability support services. Next slide. A larger university may have classes with 400 students. A larger university has technological and other resources that smaller schools wish they had. A larger school has its cons as well. The nice gym may be just specifically be for football players, and the coffee house and or cheap eats are across campus. So there's a lot of things to think about when you are looking for your school of interest. Next slide. Students with disabilities who are thinking about attending a larger school should have strong self-advocacy skills and an understanding of their strengths, weaknesses, and needs. The disability support services may be huge, and if you don't self-advocate, the DSS won't be beneficial. So some things to think about, you need to seek out your specific support, make yourself known, know how to tell somebody what kinds of accommodations are needed in specific classes, know which classes may be difficult or easy for you, and follow up to make sure people are doing what they said they would do. Next slide. Self-advocacy in college. Some things to know, what does and does not what does and does not the law provide when attending college? This is a huge step towards independence as you are now taking the initiative to self-advocate as before. There are laws in providing special services for K through 12. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 2004 guarantees that you, the student with a disability, are entitled to an IEP among other services. The IEP team and your parents were your voice. They took care of your IEP and services while in school. Next slide. I'm hoping you participate in your IEPs in middle school and high school, as participating in these meetings were part of your preparation. One task you have to obtain evaluations and other pertinent materials on file. This is an important step towards getting accommodations, modifications, and support services in college. You will have to provide documentation of your disability as well. The college or university will not provide any sort of accommodation and or modifications until disability support services. Next slide. Once you submit your paperwork consisting of a copy of your educational evaluation, IEPs, and requests for services, your assessment must be current, meaning no more than three years old. 
Currently, colleges and universities are requiring comprehensive documentation with specific types of testing. However, the specifics of documentation will vary, so make sure to ask what is needed. Once you decide and pick a few colleges and universities of interest, you'll learn what specific institutional requirements are needed. College may be more open with acceptance with you, with you if, if you have ADD or ADHD. If you provide documentation demonstrating your learning style causes a major obstacle for success in college. Remember, if you don't submit proper documentation, attending a college isn't le legally eligible for disability support services. Next slide. By the end of your senior year of high school, you should request evaluation reports along with your IEP. Once you leave high school, you are responsible for keeping track of all your records. As part of your growth towards independence, taking responsibility for your documentation and requests for accommodations is a huge step. Next slide. The American with Disabilities Act doesn't offer special education at the college level. However, colleges and universities must provide reasonable accommodations and modifications for you. Next slide. Here are some examples of accommodations for students. A hearing impaired student will need interpreters in the classroom in order to even the playing field as having the equal opportunities as other students. A student in a wheelchair must be able to get into a classroom and building around campus. A blind student may need books scanned to be able to listen to them or braille books and or any other assistive technology to adapt in the classroom and their studies. Next slide. Disability support services. All students with disabilities can benefit utilizing and maintaining a relationship with their disability support services on campus. The earlier you get to know the disability support services on your campus, the better off you will be in the long run. You can learn about all the different disability support services through their websites, catalogs, and other materials from the school. You can obtain this information from the admissions office, student and academic affairs office, advisor's office, dean of, and student affairs office. Next slide. Contacting Disability Support Services. It's your responsibility to contact DSS. Set up a meeting with Disability Support Services. During your meeting with Disability Support Services, you should discuss your courses, your syllabi, and your books as early as possible. Once I registered for classes, I would find out who the professors were and I would send them an email. Some would have their syllabi ready and others were still in the process in creating one. I would obtain what I could as early as I could. I would find out about the required books. You can also find out what are the required books through your campus bookstore as well. Sometimes I would scan my own books to make sure they were thorough and readable. Accommodations may or may not be different for each class. Read over their documents as their guidelines will vary school to school on what your responsibilities are. For example, some schools make it your responsibility to set up your test at the testing center on the same day your classmates are taking the test. Next slide. Once you set up a meeting with the Disability Support Services, think about some questions you may have in regards to your needs and your disability. Here are some example questions. What is the background and training of the staff? Will someone be assigned to me? What kinds of services are offered? And help with course registration, tutoring, study skills, college survival skills, writing labs, testing centers. What assistive technology is available? Will I have regularly scheduled appointments one-on-one? -on -one? Do you have satellite computer labs? And will any of those have assistive technology? So from the various colleges and universities that I attended across the United States, I every disability support service center was different. They all had different regulations and rules and policies implemented, and you had to do certain things by certain dates or have 
or else there was a one school where I was assigned a certain person to help me with the, my accommodations and modifications. Other times I worked with um, grad students that were assisting the disability support services. So just make sure, just be aware that every, every place is different. Next slide. There will be plenty of questions. Disability support services will, and they will vary, and each school will vary school to school. Some questions you should be able to answer. What is your disability? How does it affect your learning in class? How does it affect your studying and your homework? How does it affect you when you're trying to complete in-class assignments and tests? Next slide. Other questions. What kind of accommodations have you had before? What has worked for you? And what hasn't worked for you? Next slide. Accommodations. If accommodations are needed in respect to audio, such as text-to-speech programs like Kurzweil, make sure to let Disability Support Services know ahead of time. The Reading Foundation for the Blind and Dyslexic is a great resource for books on tape with a nominal fee. Their website is www.rfbb.org. And that's a great site. Um, because I utilize them in college as well. And, but when I was taking the Native American Indigenous Studies classes, unfortunately, a lot of the books that were needed were not available through the blind and dyslexic resources. So um, keep that in mind as well. And it's up to you to set up services and utilize the services. I can't stress this enough. As a college student, we want you to become more independent. You cannot effectively advocate for yourself if you don't understand what you need and what you don't need. You need to have a clear understanding of what your needs are for accommodations and modifications. Next slide. Strengths. Set aside, set, set aside some time and self-evaluate yourself and think about your strengths as this is an opportunity for personal reflection. Here are some examples. You might have a good memory for things you see and hear. You might be a determined person. So with that determination, it'll help you keep staying motivated as you go through your classes in college. You might have a sense of humor. So humor, a lot of the times when things go wrong, really helps you, and so does resiliency and you follow tasks and complete them. You might be a visual learner. You might have stronger verbal skills. You might have stronger writing skills. Next slide. Developing and building study skills. One main point, don't wait until the last night before a midterm to start reading text or borrow someone's notes. In college, there is an increased demand in post-secondary education. Studying is everything a student does in order to learn. And make sure to goal plan. Goal planning assists you in learning strategies to achieve your goals. In order to have a successful time in college, utilizing organization and time management skills is essential with being in control of your own academic life. Goal planning involves some basic steps. Some students may be reluctant to say they are struggling or may have excuses for their performance. Next slide. Academic evaluation. This is an evaluation to assist you with evaluating with your academics. Once you answer these questions, you can work together with staff or a friend to help in improving your academics. The academic evaluation. What is your overall feeling to your last semester in school? What was good about it? What was bad about it? Why did you have academic difficulty? What could you have done differently? What will you do to improve in the coming semester? How have you been successful? 
What are some of your goals from the coming semester? Some students will admit the poor academic performance is from not studying enough or working hard enough. You may need to ask for help to find more effective ways to study. Next slide. Goal planning. Goal planning begins with what's your purpose for being in college? Why are you here? Let's think beyond you're here to get a good job after college or your parents expect you to attend college. College is more meaningful when you figure out why you have chosen to attend the school of your choice. Such as success is important for your self-esteem, you may be the first person in your family to attend college as well. Next slide. Planning and organization. The foundation of studying is planning and organization and time management. One of the major factors in failed study skills is poor organizational skills. The first day of class, your professor will hand out the syllabus for your coursework. The coursework can, discourage, can look discouraging at first glance, but try not to overreact. Start with a plan. A weekly or monthly calendar may help you in figuring out your assignments, projects, tasks, and their deadlines. You should take a look at how the weeks flow from one to another. If each day you have reading and assignments, you may need advanced planning. And remember to give yourself plenty of time to read and research for term papers as well. Next slide. Keep this calendar available where you can see frequently by your desk or in a notebook that you use every day. By frequently glancing at it, you will internalize your schedule and you will know when your assignments are due and scheduled tests. Students should also chart to keep track of how they are doing in each class. Every time you are returned an assignment, quiz, test, paper, labs, or a project is handed back. If you chart your grades, you'll never be surprised with your progress during the semester. So if you are not meeting your expected progress and goals, you can seek help in tutoring and writing labs before it's too late in the semester. You can also talk with your professor and staff from the Disability Support Services and figure out another approach for the class. Next slide. A personal calendar that has a daily planner will help you in scheduling your daily tasks at hand. It's a good idea to keep this planner in your backpack. You can also incorporate the academic calendar with this calendar and write down important dates, such as semester breaks, exams, class registrations for the next semester. Also keep in mind social events around campus. Schedule those dates and times in your personal calendar as well. Try to establish a routine. Box in the times and days of classes. You can box in other activities, meals. If you're working, you can put in your job schedule, clubs, activities, working out, and just hanging out with your friends. Next, plan how much time you need to study and keep up with classwork. Goal planning includes your study time outside of class. Studying for the typical college course is to spend two hours studying for every hour in class. Next slide. Students who practice this increase their chances of being successful. The time used for studying and assignments is equivalent as working a full-time job. You're in class 12 to 15 hours a week, and adding your time for studying makes it 36 to 40 hours a week. If you focus on the Monday through Friday, keeping a business-like attitude towards your classes and studying, which will allocate you your weekends to have some fun. Treat college like it's a job. Another organizational tip, highlight your boxes according to a color scheme. Use one color for classes, another for study time, another for activities, or you can also use one color for certain classes and those colors would match the study time for those classes as well. Next slide. Effective scheduling. 
Don't wait until the evening to schedule all your study time. Scheduling time to study in between in the morning before classes after lunch can be very efficient time to study as well. One hour reading or even 45 minutes reading throughout the day is less painless since it's limited time and you focus on your reading. Don't expect to write a 15-page paper. The more time of reading throughout the day, the less time you have in the evening to study. Next slide. Study time should be in blocks of 45 minutes to one hour, and then make sure to take a break. Take a 15-minute break in between study sessions. Also, never study with more than three back-to-back -back sessions, depending on your workload for each class. You can use the study box to focus on one class or break up the study box for the different classes that you're taking. Next slide. Organizational tips. Don't throw away any handouts, reading, papers, and tests. And I learned from experience. Make sure you keep those because one of my professors did not um, put in her book one of my grades, and so my grade dropped a letter grade, and I had to actually fax her um, the test so that my grade could go back up. Also use folder, folders with inside pockets to organize papers. Keep papers in a binder. Label folders and dividers. Use different folders for different classes. Next slide. Studying. Places to study. Studying in your dorm room may have many distractions. Think about studying in your college or university library. The libraries there usually have excellent places to study. Find a place in the library that is distraction free. Studying takes discipline and when you know with our disability, studying and executing tasks can take us longer to get things done. Around campus, there are study areas in the various buildings and fields of study. The business or education building may have study areas as well. Find a location that fits your needs where you can focus and get your work completed. Ask Disability Support Services if they can upload Kurzweil for you on a certain computer around campus if that is what is needed. The DSS lab isn't always open for your use. Be aware of their hours just in case you need to utilize their lab and their study area. Next slide. Effective studying. Dedicate specific time and place Prioritize your time, read the material ahead of time, make notes, ask questions, participate in class discussions, find a study group, don't be afraid to ask for help, don't cram for tests, stay on track and keep your priorities in order. Next slide. And I always like to add in um, inspirational quotes um, just because I think they're very inspiring and they usually help me along the way when, you know, things get difficult in life. So one of this, one, this first quote is, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time by Thomas A. Edison. The next inspirational quote is, we are what? we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. Aristotle. Next slide. You are capable of more than you know. Choose a goal that seems right for you and strive to be the best. However hard the path, aim high. Behave honorably, prepare to be alone at times, and to endure failure. Persist. The world needs all you can give. E.O. Wilson. Next 